I've been doing a lot of research into how AI and automation are gonna impact the global workforce. And in this video, we're gonna look at distribution centers and retail. And I found a great video from the Wall Street Journal. Let's watch this video and look how Walmart, the largest employer in the United States, is implementing these tools and talk about some of the data, the statistics, and how it might impact your job. This is really important. If you wanna stay up to date, if you wanna thrive in this new AI technological age, this is the time you hit subscribe. Meet Walmart's Alphabot. This robot spends all day picking items for online orders at the company's market fulfillment centers. And it's key to speeding up Walmart's delivery. 95% of its orders can be picked in under 12 minutes. In the shipping war against Amazon and Target, Walmart is leaning into the cutting edge, investing in drone delivery and automated fulfillment centers. By 2025, 65% of our stores will be serviced by automation. A couple things here that I think are important. By 2025, that, as of today, that's like six months out. Within six months, 63% of their stores, 65% of their stores are going to be leveraging automation. And these jobs that these robots and this automation is doing historically are jobs that humans did. Just that AI and technology don't get tired they don't get sick, they don't call out, they don't play around on their phone, they don't have sexual relations with each other, which, you know, mazel tov, at least not yet, I don't know. We're, we're young into this robotics uh, revolution. Um, but I, I, what I think is really important here to realize is that retail is the nation, the United States' largest private sector employer, contributes 5.3 trillion to the annual GDP, and one in four US jobs, 55 million working Americans are going to be impacted by this. And by the way, I'm all for this. I love this. I love this. I love being able to find a pair of shoes on my phone, order it, and they show up the next day, or maybe even the same day. I love that. So and by the way, drone delivery, drone delivery, how does that impact all the Amazon, Walmart trucks, FedEx trucks, all the distribution out there if drones are delivering these things? Pretty freaking wild. All right, let's keep going. Here's how the country's biggest retailer is going high tech to deliver on more than just speed. Uh, Walmart, just a quick thing there. Walmart, the largest employer in the United States with over employing over 2 million people, over 2 million people. So the largest employer in the largest space in the United States is going automated within the next seven months. Wake up. Wake the hell up. This Market Fulfillment Center, or MFC, is attached to a Walmart Supercenter more than six times its size. Of all the company's e-commerce fulfillment methods, MFCs have the smallest footprint. Walmart is the largest grocer in the country. They have added many more different ways to get delivery, often using groceries as sort of a linchpin. So that was a big evolution when they started to think of their online business as really a grocery business. In the back of the MFC, this structure holds six to 8,000 of the most popular products sold in this area. Our automated market fulfillment centers uh, separate the inventory from the goods that customers are shopping on the store floor. These are appended to our back rooms or appended to our super centers. That separate inventory reduces congestion and the machine level accuracy ensures that we're picking the right items at the right times for our customers. This was a big thing that we learned about in at university. We're talking about, I took a logistics course and one of the most important, one of the most difficult things to get correct is having the right amount of inventory per demand, the right amount of supply for demand. Too much supply, if you have too many items rotting on your shelves, that's, that's costing you money. That's costing you money. Um, and this is, I think, where AI is really gonna shine in assessing all these different data points, trillions of different data points, all the different sales data, consumer trends, and making accurate predictions. Again, so this to me is just is just straight up productivity, straight up efficiency, straight up profitability. Um, and you know there is a there is a little bit of the rich are going to get richer here because the companies that have the most data, that have the most consumers, that have the best technology, are going to be able to leverage that to become much more cost effective. Like Walmart, largest employer in the United States. Order fulfillment starts here, where items are scanned into the Alphabot system. 
We have about 175 bots traversing this system. The bots move laterally, horizontally, and vertically to retrieve customers' goods. Each robot can carry a single milk crate size bin that can hold anything from minced garlic to 24 packs of soda. When the system receives your order, robots begin bringing your items one bin at a time to this picking station. At the same time, other robots carry these empty bins for the items to be collected in. These lights show the associate which items to take and where to put it. Instead of a user picking a product and then walking, walking, walking to that next product, one piece of automation could bring that product to the picker. So it does allow opportunities to speed up through the picking and packing process, which inherently drives accelerated shipping. Just a quick comment on this, which again, for Walmart, great. You don't have people walking all around the floor, which is probably where injuries are going to uh, arise. But like part of what one of the people sometimes ask me, Mark, you know, I'm depressed. I don't feel great. I, I don't get this, this topic a lot. But if you're not exercising, if you're not moving your body, if you feel like you have no sense of purpose, that wears you down. Like if, if, by the way, if you're depressed, you don't feel good, one of the best things you can do is just start exercising regularly. And if your job is not moving around the warehouse, it's standing in one place, just moving things from side to side, I don't think that's a recipe for happiness. Just saying. When all the items in your order have been collected, the bins get dispensed here, where they're scanned and labeled. The crates get pushed a few hundred feet away. Here, bins from room temperature, fridge, and frozen picking are consolidated so that a customer's entire order is in one place. Any items that were handpicked from the store shelves are also brought here. Now orders can be picked up by customers in person, delivered by a Walmart driver, or in limited locations dropped off by drone, often within hours. By the way, in, these, in this video, you're seeing a lot of people working, a lot of pickers there, I, I promise you, I promise you that these companies are looking to get off of as many humans as possible because of the reasons I already mentioned. I would not be surprised if this becomes more and more and more automated. We're going to be covering a lot of that on the channel too as more and more humanoid, ro humanoid robots um, come into place. Bold prediction, the best types of jobs are jobs that you can do with your hands or like recording YouTube videos like me, of course, naturally. I'm just saying. All of these options are available because the facility is attached to a store that's already close to the customer. Like Target, Walmart has a huge built-in advantage when it comes to faster delivery. A web of more than 4,600 stores across the U.S. alone. More than 4,000 of those stores offer same-day delivery directly from those locations. Target, on the other hand, is building a network of facilities that would relieve local stores of sorting and delivery duties. Our stores uh, provide a great advantage when it comes to fast delivery because they're located within 10 miles of 90% of the population. A few years ago, Walmart made a massive shift to using most of its stores to fulfill e-commerce orders. They're trying to kind of control more of it than they would have in the past and find ways to kind of use all the stores that they already have instead of spending more money. And it's very expensive to build e-commerce fulfillment centers. But by the way, just a, a quick piece of unsolicited advice here. What Walmart's doing is leveraging one of their greatest strengths, which is all of their locations. I'll record another video on McDonald's and how McDonald's is using AI and automation. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. But I think this is going to be true of, of you and what you're doing with your life. Like now is not the time to be sit back, sitting back and relaxing. Now is the time to be thinking ahead, innovating, and when you, when you do that, when you start to think about, well, what do I want to do professionally over the coming six months, five years, 10 years, be, be thinking about where your zone of genius is. What is like your skill set? What do you enjoy doing? And then look into this, spend a few minutes asking ChatGPT or uh, watching videos like this or signing up for my newsletter, AIUpdate.ai. Start thinking about, well, how do I leverage the technology plus my skill set to become more efficient? That, my friends, is how you're going to excel. It, just another quick side note, you know, I'm nothing special. I'm not a software engineer. I don't know how to code. I'm just, I have a business where I do podcast production, media production, and marketing for other business owners. And, 
you know, I, I've been experimenting with all types of AI. When I started experimenting with AI in, at that time was a side hustle. This was about two years ago. I quit my job three months later because AI made that difference and it can make that difference for you too. It will make that difference because if I, had, if I was sitting on my hands and not using AI, I would not have been able to quit my job. It was the enhanced efficiency and profitability that enabled me to leave that job. And it, it, it can work for you too. I promise you it can work for you too. You just got to find, you have to find the tools to be more effective. But most stores weren't originally built to handle both physical and online shopping. You may ship product from a store that a customer in that retail store actually wanted or went specifically to purchase. And so you may be disrupting that in-store shopping experience. We're making substantial investments upstream in our distribution centers to ensure that we can get the right items at the right time at our stores. We are also making significant investments in the digitization of our supply chain. We're utilizing AI and ML algorithms to improve forecasting, as well as improve placement of inventory in our stores and our fulfillment centers. They want to be and I kind of mentioned this before, just another quick side note. One of the things that you'll notice when you actually walk into a retail establishment like a Walmart is they're always moving stuff around. And Costco does this a lot too, by the way, but these retail companies are moving stuff around all the time. Why? Because they know that if they move your favorite items into a different area, it's going to keep you in the store longer. And the longer you are in the store, the more you're going to purchase, the more you're going to spend. So anyway, that's a little bit unlaid to the AI, but if they know a certain item isn't selling as good, they can move it off, they can move it on, they can move things around, they can move maybe the more popular items to the back of the store to make you walk through. Uh, there's all sorts of different games they can play, and it's all driven by the data and the information that they're able to assess more quickly, more efficiently with AI. This is where AI is going to shine, shine, shine basically build a mini version of something that is specifically to fulfill online orders so they can do it fast, they can have a higher quantity of orders that move through stores. Walmart now has seven of these facilities with plans to open over a hundred more in the next few years. But investing in MFCs doesn't mean the company is abandoning the traditional e-commerce distribution model that relies on huge dedicated warehouses. Walmart is also investing in five large facilities that it calls Next Generation Fulfillment Centers. Three have already opened. At 1.5 million square feet, these centers are fully automated. Our Next Generation FC. Fully automated. Fully, oh my gosh, keep going. Oh, this is crazy. Five million square feet, fully automated. Oh my gosh, how many people would it have taken to man or woman, however you want to look at it. How many people would have taken to actually make these run in the past? Thousands? Now you can do it with maybe one or two? It's crazy. These coupled with our legacy FCs can access 95% of the US population with the next day or two day delivery. They're gonna see what we as shoppers like and gravitate to and what they can afford. What, what makes it a little bit more profitable? Customers are willing to change brands if they're able to get their product much faster. And that race for speed is really being driven by a number of factors, including fragmentation of retail base. You're seeing more and more startup companies being able to compete with traditional retailers. They're able to provide that next day service to customers, and that's really driving expectations for many other retailers and their customers. As e-commerce becomes a bigger and bigger share of overall retail sales. Walmart is experimenting with lots of things and hoping that some of them stick. We're kind of back to 2019 in retail. A lot of weird things that happened during COVID that impacted the business. Now they have to get back to competing head on for every dollar. Speed is important uh, within this space. But what's also important is being time definite. We don't always ship things as fast as we can send them. Sometimes customers want to have items delivered at a specific time, and we aim to meet customers the way they want to be met. Uh, just another quick piece of unsolicited business advice. Uh, never overpromise and underdeliver. It's a recipe for disaster. I've tested that. I've tried that. Do not overpromise and underdeliver. You know, I'm a mark. I'm into marketing. That's what I do I have a marketing agency that leverages AI that leverages digital media production like YouTube podcasting things like that um, and one of the things that is a core value of our agency one of the core values that I, I really try to implement with all my team is if you say it make sure that you can do it 
never, ever, 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 ever under any circumstance over promise and under deliver. Um, and if in the odd case we do make a promise and we're not able to achieve it, I want to know about it. I want to relay that because, you know, brand is everything. And that is something that um, will, will kill your brand is over promising and under delivering. Don't do it. Don't do it. So I actually can appreciate Walmart saying, hey, we know we could do it faster, but we're not going to promise that. We'll promise next day when we know we can probably get it there the same day, which, by the way, is going to make you feel better. If you order some headphones, you want them tomorrow, you want them, you, they say they'll bring them tomorrow, but you get them today. That's a good feeling, which, by the way, you've probably experienced. I order books online. They come the same day. It's a pretty freaking, it's pretty freaking radical. And again, using the AI to determine what's going to sell. Determining who's going to buy it is is just going to really power this industry moving forward. Stuff that the human brain isn't able to do. Although, if you're a human, leveraging these tools, you're going to be able to um, be competitive. E-commerce delivery, especially small little items to your doorstep in any form, is not necessarily profitable. Walmart is trying to take a somewhat similar approach to Amazon, which uses advertising dollars or cloud computing profits to offset the cost of fast delivery. Customers also pay for some of that cost. Walmart Plus members pay $98 annually for free shipping, with fees for delivery within hours. But one of the most important cost savers could be Walmart's investment in automation. What's sort of striking is Walmart's the largest private employer in the country. Some of the workers that I talked to that have transitioned to these new roles said that their coworkers who haven't made the leap are sort of, in some cases, afraid of the technology. It's such a different job. They just don't necessarily feel comfortable with it yet. But Walmart says it's not shrinking its workforce overall. As we've talked to our associates, we talk about how work is going to look different. Today, they may walk anywhere from eight to 10 miles a day, lift hundreds of items or move cases driving powered industrial equipment. In the future, our associates are going to operate, be cell operators. They're going to be maintenance technicians. These are the roles that will require them to use their problem solving skills, their creativity. All of See, I, this is, I just don't buy this because the, the type of skills that it takes to be doing tech support on robots and uh, th these types of more technical software driven rebooting, these, these are different types of skill sets than uh, than, than the typical warehouse work, which, it, it, by the way, in and of itself is not a bad thing. And, fr and frankly, I think this is actually a good thing that we are evolving and getting better and learning new skills. But don't sit there and look me in the eye and tell me that your job is fine, your job is safe, when, by the way, we're seeing tens of thousands of jobs all over the world being being let off. I mean, all the big tech companies laying off people, all the big retailers, retailers are dropping people like flies. I mean, bro, I'm looking at an article here from CNN, which I know fake news, all that stuff, but CNN as of April of 2023 says that Walmart is laying off more than 2000 workers at five U.S. warehouses. So this, this is what's going to happen. And this is the purpose. This is the reason I, I try to share these videos is because what Walmart's going to do, what Target's going to do, what Amazon's going to do, what every single company is going to do, is they're going to lay off people that have not adapted to the new skills that are required to operate these systems. The skills that you've learned over the last 10 years are not going to be relevant over the next 10 years, which is why I just want to slap people in the face and, and give you the opportunity to start learning and evolving now. All of that automation is being implemented in the pursuit of undamaged packages delivered exactly when customers want. To deliver the perfect order, we're investing in digitizing our end-to-end -end supply chain to ensure that we have the right items in the right locations at the right time. We're investing in automation so that we can have right-sized packages, so that we can have fully curbside recyclable orders, and so that we can have the level of precision required to ensure that orders are fully accurate when they arrive on customers' doorsteps. Walmart still has a long way to go in terms of catching up with Amazon on e-commerce. But they're a bigger company than Amazon, and Amazon hasn't quite figured out stores yet, so they're actually competing in interesting ways on multiple fronts. In our final episode, it's all about you, the customer, and your experiences. 
I mean, it, that at the end of the day is the key. It's it's all about you, the consumer. That's the, the, the businesses, the entrepreneurs, the employees that do well are the people that are able to solve the right problems. So again, I hope this was a quick slap in the face, gave you a little bit of an idea of, of what's coming and start evolving. You can, you can bah humbug. You could sit on your porch shaking your fist, or you could turn your head hat backwards. I know you haters out there on YouTube hate that I wear my hat backwards. I've been doing it since I was five years old. So I don't know what to tell you. I like to wear my hat backwards. Regardless, this video was not about me wearing my hat backwards. This video is about you adapting and learning some new tools and adjusting to what's changing. And if I could give just one piece of advice, it's not complicated. Pop open chat GPT for five minutes a day and just play with chat GPT for five minutes a day. Ask it questions, ask it where you're vulnerable at work, ask it how you might be able to solve better problems at work, ask how you can become more relevant because I'm telling you right now, the people that learn and adjust and leverage these tools are going to succeed. And I hope that's you. And by the way, if you subscribe, you're going to succeed and you're going to do awesome. And by the way, if you think I'm way off base, leave a comment below. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.